Good morning. My name is James Herman, and I'm a family practice doctor in Ventura. And I wanted to talk about an issue that I think is very important to all of us. And because of this coronavirus, we've been all looking for important treatments and cures. So I wanted to talk about leeches. You can see those little guys in there. Um, no, I'm sorry. Leeches have nothing to do with the conversation about coronavirus. But the important issue that I did want to talk with you about is that of what we call social distancing. Now, I much prefer the term physical distancing while maintaining social and spiritual connection with those around us. And I think that that is very important. And I think that's how we can continue to stay close together as family and friends, as well as sh to show God's love to our community. So I just wanted to talk uh, about some of the concepts related to social distancing. Now, we understand the problem that the coronavirus is passed from person to person. Uh, frequently, it's a um, drops from our voice, from our sneezing, from our cough that are expelled out of our mouths into the air, and those can last for about three minutes. Um, they don't travel too far. They kind of uh, have a trajectory where they fall to the ground, uh, typically within a minute or two, sometimes as long as three minutes. Um, we are pretty sure that there's uh, not a significant component of coronavirus transmission through a process called aerosolization, where the virus can live in the air for many hours, like measles can. So measles is much more infective than coronavirus um, because it is able to aerosolize. Um, one of the uh, unfortunate stories we've heard recently was that of a family in New Jersey where Many got together, they had a family reunion, it was a great time, and unfortunately one of the members of the family was very sick um, and was uh, um, became kind of the, the patient zero of that family, and eight other members of the family have contracted the virus and four uh, died from it. And so it's really a tragedy when we think that a family gathering can uh, be, which is such a, a wonderful time, joyous time, and so important in, in so many people's lives, that that can be a source of tragedy. And so um, we, uh, in my family, have begun to practice social distancing with my father, who is 80 years old, in a way that none of us would have believed uh, or, or thought that it would be necessary um, even a couple months ago. So. Um, just to let you know how we work that out and how we're practicing that, um, I wanted to go through all of that and just that may give you some concepts of how you can do social distancing in a safe way and yet still allow us to maintain those connections with people and very important uh, spiritual and social connections. Um, so my father, uh, he was going to be turning 90. Uh, he had his birthday last weekend. He um, is a wonderful guy and he loves his family. He loves his family around him. Uh, there were five of us children, four of us were planning to come um, and one or two of the older grandkids, but we were thinking, well, we better not have, you know, little little kids and, and um, who are kind of running around the house and the older um, adult children would be able to you know, understand how to be washing our hands regularly, how to keep a little bit of a distance that we wouldn't come up and hug Papa. And so we decided, well, we'd love to be able to continue to do this. And so, uh, but the week before that, that's when we started heard, hearing about some of these tragedies from family gatherings. Um, uh, even more recently, just a couple days ago, we heard about a, um, a funeral that was being held in the UK and uh, several members of that um, gathering uh, have contracted the virus. So, so again, this is serious business. And as we started hearing about this, we decided that we would have to cancel dad's 90th birthday party. And as you can imagine, we were all really devastated. 
but as we all began to communicate uh, individually and then uh, uh, as a group, we, we decided that we would have to just essentially cancel his birthday. Um, I, I actually asked him if he still wanted to go ahead with this, uh, taking a, a risk, um, because we know that people over the age of 80 have a very high risk of complication. The mortality rate for people over the age of 80, unfortunately, is about 20%. Whereas the younger people, less than age 40, they have less than half of a percent of mortality. So this is very important that we practice social distancing for people over the age of 60 as the rates are starting to climb. Uh, and the people in our community who have uh, medical conditions that increase their risk. Um, in addition, social distancing will uh, allow us to uh, maintain uh, a, a reduction in the overall burden on our medical community because as they talk about the flattening of the curve that it's going to take a lot longer for the 60% or so in a community to contract the virus and then uh, it'll be easier on the medical community as the, the rate of numbers of patients uh, is not as significant. So um, getting back to my father's birthday party, well, it was off. I was planning to drive up to Stockton, which is where he lives, and um, I was gonna stay in his home. My uh, Jen and Grace, my daughter, they were gonna be coming up with us. So then we decided, well, maybe it'll just be me who goes up with uh, and some of the adult kids. And then we decided that we weren't gonna have any more contact with my dad physically and um, we've decided on a couple policies uh, one policy is that whoever is visiting him is going to be bringing him whatever groceries he needs putting it on in a box on his front doorstep in, a, in front of his door and then stepping back away from the door if we are back Six feet is the, the recommendation, so I'm a, a little bit more um, OCD, if you will. So I you know, said, well, let's stay 10 feet back. Dad would open the door and pick up his groceries and bring them inside, and then we could sit and we could have a chat. Um, the, the idea from that for that actually came from my dear sister-in-law, Diana. Um, she has an older mother as well that and she began doing that and she said we have had some wonderful times sitting and chatting I would sit in a lawn chair on her front uh, front walk and she would sit in a chair just inside her door we would be separated by those six or ten feet whatever you prefer and they were having uh, just wonderful times being able to to get together and to talk and to see each other and um, so I just wanted to say that um, with that in mind, we decided to implement um, a strategy where we could continue to spend time with my dad. And so even though I wasn't going to be going into his house, I decided that I still wanted to go up for the weekend. I needed to see my dad. It was the Friday that the governor had put um, a kind of a, a more strong uh, stay at home policy and I didn't know if they were going to be shutting down uh, travel between cities that was unnecessary so I was going to go for it and fortunately I had all my backpacking gear already packed for a trip that we were going to take two weeks ago up into the Cespi above Ojai. Well, that didn't happen for other reasons, but I had all my gear, so I just threw it in the back of my car. I drove up to Stockton, and I camped out in his backyard. So um, I made dinner on my little Weber grill, and he made his dinner, he brought it out. He sat down on his porch in the backyard, and I sat down in a lawn chair, and we had a wonderful time. So I just wanna say that, um, you know, getting together can still happen. It can still happen six feet apart. And as long as I'm not touching um, the things, you know, in his house or going into his house, as long as I'm not giving him a hug, um, and as long as he's doing uh, his uh, kind of cleaning of groceries that he's doing and making sure that nothing that comes into his house is 
contaminated with the virus. Um, potentially, he could go through this entire thing without ever contracting the coronavirus. And that's our hope for my dad. Um, but it's really clear that we cannot completely uh, um, enforce isolation with people. Sometimes this is gonna be a little bit more difficult in an apartment setting where you have to stand um, out away from the door in the hallway at the apartment and just spend a little time chatting. Um, there's lots of other ways. There's ways that we can share our lives with others. There's Instagram and TikTok. Um, House Party is another app where family units can get together from different places. Uh, we had, we spent three hours with my son in Corvallis, Oregon, and my daughter in Portland, Oregon, and the three of us at home. And uh, we were all in our own rooms so that there wouldn't be uh, interference on the, on the microphones, but we had a great time playing games with each other, talking with each other, just enjoying being together, uh, even though it was virtually. So I really encourage you all to think about ways that you can practice physical distancing and yet um, maintaining closeness. Um, and I think it's a really important that we uh, reach out to people who, who may not have those kind of social contacts that, uh, um, and, and to try to support them as well. So um, just be thinking about that, be praying about that. Let's all be safe out there, and uh, thank you for your time.